Could you say a little about your own career, please, and what attracted you to mining? I was very fortunate to be brought up on two stations in Australia's northwest, Mulga Downs and then Hammersley. Um, so my first career as a child was helping on the stations. I love station life and the north. This area, once the government's export embargo was lifted and then West Australia's pegging ban was lifted, that is its ability to get exploration title, changed as iron ore mine after iron ore mine opened and much benefit was brought to the previously remote and somewhat inhospitable region. Post offices, police stations, fire brigade stations, doctors, shops, entertainment, better roads and airports, things people in cities expect, came to the Pilbara region, which is now well known as Australia's premier iron ore producer and exporter. So I saw at first hand the benefits mining brought to the Northwest and indeed to West Australia. Pre the Pilbara iron ore industry, West Australia had been a mendicant or handout state, unable to support itself. So with my father as a very successful prospector, my love for the area and appreciating the benefits mining brings, my career in the mining industry was sealed. I became executive chair of Hancock Prospecting in 1992 when our company was unfortunately in a desperate and difficult position. Few assets were left, what assets that were left were mortgaged to the hilt or under legal threat or claim, including some tenement assets, which only had temporary title then, with the company also having extensive liabilities and heavy contingent liabilities. After decades of considerable stress, dedication and very hard work and three major mines and one mega mine established while I was chair and CEO. Our company is now the leading private mining company in Australia, the most successful in Australia's history. What challenges does being a female CEO of a major miner present? Frankly, I've been too busy working um, and dedicated to the challenges in our company group to really focus on gender issues. Um, it was said about me, I worked like 20 men. A female I greatly admire, one of Britain's Prime Ministers, Baroness Thatcher, certainly had these traits, as well as being exceptionally brave and strong. I'm not saying I'm like this outstanding lady, but I too do think sometimes women have a beneficial trait where often not as guided or misguided by ego. In my case, it's been a benefit, I believe. I've just focused on what's best for our company group. If I'm not because I'm not a man, frankly, so what? When such man has rescued and built a now major company into one of the most successful private companies in Australia and now an international concern, maybe they have something I should listen to. What do you consider to be your greatest achievements? Turning a company in very real difficult circumstances after considerable stress and hard work into one of the most successful private companies ever in Australia's history and now an international group. Your greatest fears? The growing size and reach of government in Australia and in various of the other countries I like. We've seen what happened in Argentina during the socialist parents regime. This once very prosperous country with its cattle barons, beautiful mansions, buildings, beautiful buildings, restaurants, hotels, furniture and fashion and with one of the top eight living standards in the world crash, it's yet to fully recover. We've seen what happened in Rhodesia, also one of the top eight economies in the world. Great farms and more turn into the poverty of Zimbabwe, with many of its productive members of the country forced to leave. And on the other hand, we've seen a very poor country, Singapore, 
It was poor only five decades ago. Rise from poverty and rickshaws by a low tax and tape to a country with the fourth highest per capita in the world, together with many billions in investments. All this without minerals, without adequate land to grow its food, without even its own water. Just the Singapore government wise enough in Lee Kuan Yew's time to keep taxes and tape very low. Another huge fear of mine is education. We're losing the real education of being able to think rationally, being replaced with learning misinformation and left propaganda, even being marked down or threatened with expulsion if you don't accept left views. Another fear of mine is the willingness of the media to distort or write untruths. For instance, it used to be if a person did something wrong, that was wrong. But now the media are influenced by too much left bias. So if a conservative or Republican does something wrong, that's wrong. But not if a socialist does, indeed, scarcely reported. I saw from a Sky News video that you've been quite active in Australia in raising awareness over the risks posed by coronavirus and assisting in the combat against the disease. How has COVID-19 impacted your business and how can you best tackle this situation? Yes, I have been active and I'm very happy to say none of our employees have contacted COVID-19 while working. One contractor staff member while off-site did get COVID, but not while working. We were either the first or one of the first to make the arrangements to move our staff out of our offices. I requested this across our company group, including for agriculture and internationally. The technical staff needed for automation had to remain at their office. For FIFO staff, I suggested to firstly cut those roles as much as possible, suggesting our rep goes to the government and explains with COVID-19, we need to be excused from all site reporting to save those staff from FIFO trips. For those who still needed to FIFO, I requested temperature taking pre-test kits becoming available, distancing and spraying, and we were the first to implement all. For the site staff, I requested new coffee and tea making facilities to be at each of their dongas to save going to the mess. We had meals delivered to the dongas. These are some of the measures we took, along with repetitive messaging and reminding our staff it's their responsibility to protect themselves, as we've suggested, against COVID and their responsibility not to spread germs to others. As said, we've been very fortunate. Our staff have all been very responsible. So we've managed to keep supplying and our ore production didn't decline. It's a different story with agriculture. Restaurants closing has meant market adjustment for our high-end products such as 2GR Wagyu and Santa Gertrude's grain fed. Can you explain a little about the current expansion of work and any other company plans you may have? Yes. Um, we've invested last year another 300 million to bring the biggest in Australia WIMS plant to Roy. This is giving us almost another 5 million tonnes per annum for all we wouldn't otherwise use, so it is of extra value. If this goes as well as expected, we'll decide this year to invest in another WIMS plant to upgrade further ore. We are currently building a new mine at Atlas. Our work and studies are progressing at Mulga, and more is being developed in the pipeline for Hope Downs. We are getting closer to development of our uh, gold in uh, Victoria and coking coal uh, project in Canada. Work continues well in Ecuador and Sirius in England is getting closer to production under its new owner, Anglo. I'd like to send warmest regards to each and every one of you. Please keep COVID free. Thank you.